Hello everybody, my name is Luke Marr and this is Hot La Mode and today on Hot La Mode we are coming to you with our January 2022 fashion roast, the first fashionable month of the year for 2022. I'm intrigued, I'm excited, there's a lot to discuss from Euphoria to Rihanna and ASAP Rocky pregnancy, Kanye and Julia Fox and the Kim Kardashian, like there, there's so much, so much to discuss. So without further ado, let's just get right into it. First up we have Alexa Demi. Now she wore a Balenciaga Spring 2022 look to the Euphoria premiere and honestly it's not the craziest look but I'm okay with it. The strapless black sequin moment is nice. Panta shoe knife boot also works. Listen if you're gonna have a high slit at least there is some sort of element that's not just leg underneath it. When it comes to panta shoe it's sort of a spandex that goes all the way up. It probably is like a pant I would presume under there. Maybe you know the black was not the best idea just because the background is black so you kind of lose the dress and the silhouette except for the fact that the light is shining off the sequins. I'm intrigued and I want to see this Alexa Demi and Balenciaga thing continue because I have a feeling it's going to go somewhere fun and exciting but I feel like there may be like a couple other looks from that collection that could have popped off better but I'll handle it. I'll deal with it. Next up we had Angus Cloud. Now he is wearing a Versace Spring 2022 suit. Essentially it's an orange sort of suit. Very bright, very Versace. You know you can look through old collections and see how much the color really jumps out. He's wearing a little white turtleneck underneath and we can see that there is a little strap going on here. On the runway we can see that there is a little Medusa head in the gold and black. You know the Versace is coming through. I like the fact that it's kind of trying to do just a little bit subtle menswear suiting. You know bondage menswear is getting into the harness game. Pornhub thank you. I don't know what that has to do with anything but in reality I do appreciate at least that there's some element of it that is not just like suit that you've seen a million times. I think the color is good. I think it works. Also the fact that he has like that little orangey sort of beard. Good. The white sneakers with the white turtleneck. It's playing well. It's not trying to do too much. It's letting the suit do the work. And the strap, bondage, harness situation going on that's very subtle. If that's what the reference point is, I'll take it. Next up is Anna Diop. Now she is wearing Zimmerman and this is like ethereal. It really is stunning. This white linen I, I guess it's a shirt with a sort of spaghetti strap slip dress or maybe it's all together and it's just making a faux slip dress situation going on but these sleeves that have this puff situation going on I want to say that it's like a reverse leg of mutton big up here and then sort of slims down but here it's it's reverse it's sort of slimmer here and then sort of puffs as we get down there. The fact that you have all these beautiful buttons that go straight down I do think that it has a fun princess cut. The fact that you can sort of see all the perforation and the beautiful details of this very 1970s inspired by sort of vintage peasant dress I'm sure to a degree but in this white that's so crisp and it's so clean. She looks like a campaign honestly and I feel like that's very hard to do for a lot of celebrities when they when they post pictures. Oftentimes it's like oh you took that on an iPhone 7 and listen I love an iPhone 7 but like we could do a little bit more in terms of camera quality. I think she looks fantastic. I really do. I think this is show stopping. I think this is stunning. I think the dress in and of itself is beautiful and she wears it so so brilliantly. Next up we have Bella Hadid. Now she is wearing, honestly I don't know. We talked about this look in the TikTok video about euphoria and the high school dressing and all of that. I know that Bella wore this to go out and also I apologize to Devin. I know who she is. I just did not know that that was her. I'm not a face girl. This brown dress I think is great. I think it's super fun. Bella I think very much so understands trends. I think she knows what A is on the runway because like oftentimes she wears it and she spends a lot of time around it. On top of that I think she's understanding of she needs to be a part of the trend and sort of like push the trend in a way. It keeps her relevant. It sort of keeps the styles flowing. Initially you have these sort of white knee-high go-go boots square toed. It gives you very 1960s sort of feeling. But the dress here it has a very sort of 1960s meets 1920s and the 1960s was inspired by the 1920s most definitely. So you have like a drop waist moment going on here but this o-ring belt that sits in the middle this plunging beautiful sharp neckline. It's a 
it's a halter style at the same time. There's a little high-low element to it. There's so much in this dress. At the same time, the brown allows it to just be really not super crazy in terms of motif or pattern or anything like that. It allows the actual elements of construction to do the work. So a drop waist and a halter and a high-low, I think that works well. And again, I think it is showcasing that 1960s is coming and anybody that's not prepared so 1960s go-go boot meets 1920s, 1960s, beautiful little drop waist dress. I'm sold. She looks good. I'm not gonna sit here and lie to all of you. Next up is Katrina Balfe, and now she is wearing Loewe. This is from spring 2022. Listen, I commend anybody that wears a Loewe look off the runway anywhere. It's a lot. It's like an art piece, kind of verges on costume. So you have a sequin purple slip dress, right? Which I think is fun, and it's kind of like my favorite part about it, is there is a leg hole that you put your leg through. So instead of a slip, Lit, which is just sort of like everyday sexy slip dress moment. No, he's like, there's a hole. So you have to like perform, AKA put your leg through this hole and then walk in the dress. So in between your legs is the dress, which I think is hilarious. It also has like a small green sort of ruffle and a, and a gold sort of outline to like, it's so weird and it's so funny and it makes me laugh. It's so strange and I don't get it. She then also put like a leather coat over top and I'll say for the cold weather, I will allow it just cause I'm in the New York area and like that leg would have been very chilly and that's fair. Also, I'm excited about the Oscars with her because she's, she's a fashion girl and we, we love it. Next up is Cynthia Nixon. Now she is wearing Christopher John Rogers and this is from the 008 collection. I don't think about Christopher John Rogers collections in seasons anymore because he's like, I'm not doing it. And I'm like, okay, we're not doing it. I, numbers, that's the vibe. But I love this dress again because it is a good solid way of showcasing that like A, a CJR knit, is very much so in, it makes sense. But the best part about this dress, and it doesn't really do you any justice by seeing it just on a still image in video. It's so good. The go day sort of spin and turn and twist. And so you get this like beautiful rainbow of colors. And so I think that's another thing about CJR that I think is very, very smart is yes, color. That's easy, that's very understandable, but he's trying to work it into garments in a way that's not just like, oh my God, Lucky Charms, the rainbow. He's trying to work it in a way where it's deeper, it showcases that there's like a technique, that there's a thought process going on, that there's like an experimentation with creating clothing that allows a different reaction and interpretation. So I love it. I, I appreciate that Cynthia Nixon goes for, for a CJR moment. She often does. And just like that, I'm into it. Next up, we have Dula Peep. She is wearing Christopher Esper. Now, listen, she's into a cutout moment and I'm very here for it. She did that with Courage quite a while ago. Now she's doing it here with Christopher Esper, who I believe is Australian. Don't crucify me if that's not true. The cutout sort of descending down on the front and the back, like the torso area of the dress. It's intriguing. I'm not obsessed with it. And I feel like she's wearing a little Prada shoe. It's that little tiny heel. It feels very, very Prada, but also a Balenciaga bag. So she's like, I don't really care. I'm not beholden to everybody else. It's fine. I get it. I love it now. Next up, we have Emma Corrin. She is in the Mew Mew campaigns. And like, that's a great thing about Emma Corrin. She was a model before she was on the crown. So like, that's why I think it's fun with her because you could put her in anything and like, she's gonna go, she's gonna go. You don't know where she's gonna go, but she's gonna go. I think this is a great collection, honestly. I know a lot of people wouldn't appreciate it. I understand why they wouldn't. I do wish that Prada had passed range of sizes, but I do appreciate the fact that Emma is wearing button down. It's cropped, it's like so cropped. And you can tell that it's not like a, snip snip prop because you can see th the fact that the lapels of the shirt are coming down so it's not like oh uh, i'm going to four day high and like i'm going to cut off my shirt and then you have a little cropped sweater moment very cute on top of that it's a what looks like an almost maxi pencil skirt but at the same time there seems to be some sort of band of fabric that matches the sweater you have a little belt and a matching blazer it's a very strange school uniform very much so saint trinian's vibes but like here for that, very much so here for that. Next up we have Hailey Bieber. I promise I didn't plan these out so that they were right next to each other, but it's another Mew Mew look. Again, we sort of have a very schoolgirl sort of style. Now, I know a lot of you are probably like, why, why schoolgirl? 
Utah Prada, in my opinion, was going for probably referenced like her growing up in the 1960s wearing uniforms. I'm sure that they didn't look like this, but I do know that she sort of first learned how to sew because she wanted to hem her skirt so that it was more mini skirt-esque, but her parents wouldn't let her, so she'd have to learn how to do it really quickly before she went to school, but after she left home. So like, icon status. In that regard, I do think this little crop top with the belt in a matching skirt with a little sort of trench coat over top. Cute, beautiful, stun, gorge. Next up we have Hunter Schaefer. Now at the Euphoria premiere, she wore a custom Prada look. She is a Prada ambassador, one of the main Prada ambassadors. So the whole model to actor pipeline very much so exists. I mean, Emma Corrin, Hunter Schaefer is another very good one. She's wearing this off the shoulder. I'm gonna go with organza dress. It's in red, it has very obvious seams running up and down or some sort of, it's not boning, but it's very obvious like strips of fabric that are meant to show through the transparency. And then it's a off the shoulder white button down with a shirt kind of underneath, but it's a little spaghetti strap off the shoulder button down shirt. It's very strange, but it's also good. Now, I will say that this is a reference to spring 1997. It's not an exact look, but I'm pretty positive that Prada went back into the archives and sort of was like, oh, that's cute, let's do this. So you can see from that collection initially, there are elements of this sort of style. It's very much so part of the whole Mutual Prada 1990s minimal experience. I think it's very, not short period, but it's, it's not, you know, the whole 1990s was minimal from her. But I think this is sort of one of the collections that definitely gets thrown in there with the whole minimal moment for Prada. I think Hunter here does it well. I think it's a nice look. I think it's somewhat, it's not conservative, but like it is. But again, it sort of utilizes these elements of risque moments, like an off the shoulder that would expose some sort of cleavage if it didn't have the button down there, a sort of sheerness throughout the whole of the dress. And at the same time, you know, it gives it a little bit like bourgeois feel, but like remixed and redone, which if you look at Mutual Prada's work, a lot of her work from this sort of time period centers on the bourgeois class, you know, the like ritzy, and how you can reconfigure that to be a lot more fun, a lot more intriguing, a lot more different, and a lot more avant-garde than the initial sort of bourgeois dress. I think it's well done. I appreciate Hunter always going for a reference. It's a nice look. Next up we have Jacob Elordi. He's wearing a, I, I don't know. I'm not sure who he's wearing actually. It's a black suit with a little white button down and a white shoe that is steel toed. Here's my thing. I've seen Jacob Elordi in like far more exciting, fun things. So like, where's that? Where's that element? Where's that excitement? Where's that? moment. Leave the blah say to Nate. Let him do that. Try harder. A lot harder because I'm I'm bored. I am uninterested. Next up, let's talk about Julia Fox and Kanye West. Now, Julia Fox, I think this is my first time discussing her on the channel. I didn't want to talk about her when she was with Kanye before because it was like, I don't know what this is. I don't know what the, like, am I supposed to talk about this person? Am I not supposed to talk about this person? She's wearing a Schiaparelli denim jacket with the puffed up little bullet bra situation going on in a denim. She's wearing a pair of jeans that from my understanding are actually Daniel Roseberry, who is the creative director of Scaparelli's. He gave them to her. He was like, here. And she was like, oh, great, this matches. Even though like they don't technically match. On top of that, you have boot situation going on. It's probably like a Y project moment maybe because like that makes sense for her. Everybody's talking about the makeup. That's not what I'm here for. So I'm not gonna talk about that. I like the look. I think it's fun. I think it's cool. I know people are gonna be like, oh my God, like the jacket, like it's knocking off Gautier. Like A, no, no hate to Jean-Paul Gautier at all when I say this, but like he did not invent the bullet bra. 1950s, it existed. And on top of that, it's something that I think can like be redone. I think unless a big brand, whether it's fast fashion company, luxury brand, is knocking off a young designer who's done something interesting and original. I'm not really like into the conversation of like, they copied me. It's like they all copy each other. You know what I mean? Like that's, that's kind of just what they do. Kanye in the full denim set with the boots. Good, solid. Kanye likes a denim set. Always has, always will. I'm intrigued to the fact that he is Julia's stylist and we'll see where that, where that goes. Next up, let's talk about Kim Kardashian. So here's the thing. Thing. I am intrigued in the way that Kim and Kanye have been going about this quote unquote divorce. And I've talked about this, I would say last summer when they first announced that they were divorcing and how Kim's fashion sort of transformation came via Kanye to a degree in a much more sort of like high fashion sense. And I know people are like, oh, you're just like giving man all the credit for that. And it's like, no, I'm just 
genuinely recognizing the fact that Kim probably wouldn't have been let in as many doors if it wasn't for Kanye because while the fashion industry definitely has their own thoughts on Kanye, there is an element of Kanye that is undeniable for these brands and that they must recognize important aspects of Kanye's work, culture, trend creation that he has done over his career. I think with the whole Kim thing, it's been good that she's been with Demna even though Kanye also wears a lot of Balenciaga and I'm like is Demna like the in-between is he like the mediator with the lawyer for the divorce like I need to know I genuinely think that Kim got very frazzled by Julia Fox wearing a look a Luke as Peyton Manning said recently on SNL and then she did this and I think that's the issue is when you're playing defense Kim it's not working doesn't work and these thigh high shoes are a great example of messy like they look like they're denim like they have that sort of of surface texture and motif of like a grainy sort of denim, but they don't look nearly as good as those Glenn Martin's pants. You know what I mean? Like with a little tight underneath and then a black tank and then coat of wool and then the hourglass. It, it's messy. It's messy. It's not put together. It doesn't have the sense making that the majority of her other looks have had. I think it was a poor calculation on the Kim Kardashian camp. It just didn't work out there it didn't fit in it was bad and i say she let it be seen that she had wandering eyes she was cheating off julia's test and it was very evident so kim don't do that anymore because it's not a good look for you next up is kristen stewart she is wearing chanel on the cover of australian vogue it's a full knit moment with the pearls and a, a little cardi and a bralette and i'm sure some sort of skirt or pant and costume jewelry i think she looks good listen there are a lot of chanel looks that could mess up the mojo of K stew but this is a good one i'm here for it i really appreciate it i really enjoy it i'm really loving it so Thank you. Next up, we have Lily Collins and she's wearing Saint Laurent. Here's the thing. This is from the pre-fall 2022 collection. And again, pre-collections, they're always a little bit more demure. You have a black cocktail dress. It has like a frilled sort of collar, but also is like a turtleneck. And then at the same time, it's full of gold embroidery, but they're like little orbs but look like vines, but look like foliage, but like not. And then it's just like kind of polka dots of gold. I just want to say, I don't dislike Lily Collins. Do I dislike Emily Barris? Yeah, but I appreciate Lily. I like the fact that we have a little thigh high mom going on here. I like the fact that she's a Saint Laurent woman. Would I have chosen a different dress? Yeah, but like it could be worse. It could it could always be worse, especially with Emily in Paris. You know what I mean? On a good Emily in Paris day, I would say, yeah. And also if I ever say I'm doing things in two parts, know that the second part is never coming. Next up we have Lily James and she's wearing a Telly Versace. Sace. Now listen, the Italian Versace collections don't really like come out like they used to. Like you, you have to like search for them. Those are pretty much the Italian version of Ochoir Pellier collections from Versace. I appreciate the look a lot. I have to say the silver dress underneath with the crystallization going all throughout, swerving and swooping and curving. Oh, it's whatever. But this jacket is hot. And the thing is, they both fit impeccably. And I think that's the best part about it is taste can be questionable, but if something fits well, that's a foundation, you know what I mean? When you have good foundation, even if the house is ugly, you can appreciate that there's good foundation. The fact that this jacket fits, and I mean like, I'm, I'm calling it a jacket, it's really kind of like a bolero with like, would you consider this a jacket? I'd like to know in the comments, but I love it. I think the swerves and the swoops and the curves and the pink are lovely. The fact that, that shoulder and that sleeve is just hot. The fact the little buckles sort of come in and help to create a waist there as well. It's really subtle, fun. Next up we have Lori Harvey and she is wearing Prada. Now this is from fall 2021 and it is a full bodysuit in this very intriguing pattern of black and pink. From the runway, it's worn with like different sort of gloves. So it's like clashing prints, motifs, which definitely an ugly chic Prada collection moment going on. I think that's spring 1996. And then fall 1996 is like ugly chic part two, the remix. And I feel like that's probably where this is coming from. Also a bit of like the 1960s, 1970s influences for Mucha Prada too, always there. Raph Simmons sort of brings an intriguing element with like a shoe and the gloves and all of that. But it seems like Lori said, I'm just gonna do the bodysuit. The shoes I think are an intriguing choice only because I think they would have benefited from this being a full sort of like cat suit moment. I know I just called this a bodysuit the whole time and I know it's not a bodysuit, it's a cat suit. Listen, I appreciate that she went for it because there are not a lot of peeps that would go and sort of try to do this. And by not a lot, I mean like none. She pulls it off very, very well. I just think the accessorization could have been different and that would have been helpful. But besides that, 
I'm here for this. Megan Fox and Machine Gun Kelly were like Dolce. I'll just show it to you and then we're gonna move on. Next up is Madeline Petch. You probably know her from Riverdale, but she, she did her outings during the Haute Couture season. She attended Fendi and she wore a Fendi Spring 2022 ready to wear look. I appreciate this look. I think it's fun. It definitely has, you know, sort of 1960s pop arty sort of vibe, maybe a little bit like Art Nouveau, 1970s hippie dippy moment. But at the same time, it's like a turtleneck dress with, you know, some prints on it, but like it works. The issue really for me is the shoes because on the runway, they're really good shoes. Like they're stunning. They're gorgeous. They're beautiful. I understand maybe they were you know, too tall. They're so, uh, maybe that's why they weren't worn. But like the Christian girl autumn boot, not needed. Slap a hat on her and then Photoshop her in an apple orchard. And like we have ruined what was a great Fendi look and demoted it. And listen, I appreciate a Christian girl autumn, but like I don't think Kim Jones is shooting for Christian girl autumn. The fact that he's like British, the fact that they don't really like go to apple orchards. I think the shoes should have come from the runway because these these are rough. Next up is Maude Apatow. Now she wore a strapless Saint Laurent dress to the Euphoria premiere. And again, like I don't know who told everybody to wear black on the black step and repeat and black red carpet, but like we shouldn't have done that. Essentially the dress, as we said, is strapless. It's made out of like a netting of crystal. And then there's a black little bodysuit. And then it's trimmed in little feathers. Anthony Vaccarello is really like going for his Chanel moments. I feel like these feathers definitely remind me of like Chanel looks from the 1920s. There are other designers I'm sure that were doing similar sort of styles and trimming garments with feathers in this way, but I think that Anthony likes taking the Chanel thing because once the Chanel CEO sort of like let it rip that he was not happy about it, I feel like he's kind of been like, mine, I think, yeah. Saint Laurent himself would take Chanel isms and bring them to his brand. And I'm also pretty positive that Chanel herself was like, I don't like that he does it, but at least he takes it from me and you know, not the rest of them because they're all shitheads. I don't think she would have said shithead, but like, I feel like that's kind of what is going on here. Most definitely. Obviously it's not a direct reference, but that's my theory on it, but I like it. I think it's fun. I appreciate that she went for it. I appreciate that she did something a little bit out of the box for her. She's trying to make a statement. And then we had another mod Apatow moment. And again, it's Saint Laurent. And again, it's pretty much a very similar dress. Now this is a sort of like beigey tan style and it has a sort of 1940s shoulder. Again, like the Scandal collection, you're always kind of going to have those like sharp shoulders. Saint Laurent, very much so a part of the brand's history. And then it's trimmed in these feathers as well. The fact that it's crystallized is okay. Like, listen, the shoes I would have changed, I feel like those shoes on the model are really fun. I kind of wish that we had added a tight there because I feel like that would have added to that sort of grungy Saint Laurent sort of feeling. I really appreciate the dress. I just wish that the styling had like helped to keep it strong. Next up is Megan Fox by herself, her lonesome. This is a Dion Lee look and I, I love it. Like where, forget Dolce. Do Dion. So it's a little tank top. It has a cutout moment in the center there. And then the pant is fun because it, it sort of loops around. It, it creates a wraparound feeling on this nice pant. And again, like it fits beautifully. Like the accessories I think are really, really good too. They are a lighter sort of shade of this periwinkly blue purpley situation going on. And I think that the fact that the bag and the shoes perfectly match and the top and the pant almost perfectly match is lovely. I think it's gorge, think it's stun, think it works, think it's what we need. Thank you, Dion Lee. Next up, we have Miley Cyrus. She is wearing Gucci. Now this is from the fall 2021 collection. It is a leather accentuated safari suit that is also a romper, which I kind of love. And it's also in the Gucci monogram. It's like very 1970s Gucci, but I feel like that's fun. I feel like that's interesting. And listen, the Gucci monogram, I will allow very rarely. I think when it's done in this sort of like heritage style and it has like a vintage feel to it, very solid, very nice. I think the shoes are also a little bit go-go, but at the same time, you know, the leather on the tips, the leather at the top, it all works. I appreciate Miley in this regard. I think she has an 80s sort of feeling, you know, blondy, all that. It's cool, it's intriguing. All right, let's talk about the thing that you are really all here to see, Rihanna wearing Chanel Fall 1996 to announce that she is pregnant with ASAP Rocky. I love it. So here's the thing. This is a vintage huffer down sort of jacket in a lovely pink by Karl Lagerfeld initially. Rihanna wore a Chanel look from the same collection. It was in like 2021. Maybe it was like April or something, 2021. I'm intrigued by it. I feel like it's fun. I like the fact that she always goes for a solid, good vintage, sexy moment. Always hot. The fact that it's buttoned really only at the top and exposes the belly is a fun way to sort of play on 
showcasing a belly bump. And then there is a very baggy jean, which she goes for a baggy jean. This is not new. Ripped a little bit up there. And I know people are very upset about the hems, but like it's for dramatic effect. Also, it's like Rihanna. She got in the car, she got out of the car, and she got back into the car again. You know what I mean? Like she was not trampsing around New York going from, you know, the Upper East Side to Harlem down to Soho back to like Central Park West. That's not her vibe. It's place, car, door, car door to place. That's all she does. So on top of that, she is wearing a full set of Chanel custom jewelry. There is a pearl necklace that is long, dangly, definitely reminiscent of Coco Chanel's sort of strand of pearls that she would wrap around her neck. And then you have a little chain belt, black sort of leather strip that goes through with a gold chain. Definitely play back to the Chanel chain for the bags, the initial sort of quilted styles. Overall, I loved it. I thought it was fun. I didn't think it was like too over the top. I didn't think it was too dramatic. Felt kind of like very New York in a way. And I think seeing how like ASAP is from New York, it makes sense. I appreciated it. As for ASAP, he's wearing a little nice core heart jacket and denim, V-neck sweater with a hoodie, which I'm kind of like, oh, I want that. But I know the pants are Maximilian. So I'm like, yay, Maximilian, love it. They're cute. They're nice little finally moment with the black boot and the black beanie. Very cute, very ASAP. He's like, listen, I'm not the main attraction here. It's Rihanna and the baby. So I'm like, Yay, happy. Love that. Next up is Storm Reed, and she's wearing Harbison, which I believe is an up and coming brand. But I like this look. I feel like it has a sort of like robe de steel moment, a little bit like Jean Lanvin, like old haute couture, 1920s, 1930s feeling to it. I think it's fun. I do. I genuinely do. So you have like a little sort of black bodice and then there's some sort of white embroidery going down big sort of mismatching buttons I wonder if that's maybe like a Patrick Kelly reference and then you have these sort of taffeta juts that sort of come out in white do I wish maybe they were a little bit more steamed yes absolutely but like I appreciate the look I think it's really fun I think it's a really cool sort of reference if that's what it's referencing and if so like I can't wait to see more from Harbison shout it out next up we're talking about Sydney Sweeney and listen I don't normally do this but we're talking about two looks here. First one is what she wore to the Euphoria premiere and she understood the assignment. She's wearing Miu Miu. It's custom. It's a crop top. It's a low slung skirt. It's full of embroidery, Mutra Prada, making embellishments, very much so modern, exciting, interesting in the everyday experience. But I think it's nice. I think it's sweet. I think it fits in with a sort of Miu Miu-ism of like pretty sweet, very just existing. The gloves work. I feel like also with the way that Euphoria is going this season, it's very Cassie. It's like so dramatic. It's so over the top. It's so much for the premiere that I kind of love it. I know that we've seen like Alexa Demi in Balenciaga gown and all that, but I feel like this has far more dramatics to it. Like just the embroidery, the gloves, the stance, like it's just, it's doing so much, but I also love it because I think that Sydney Sweeney is a scene stealer this season. Like last season, I literally did not even discuss her when I did a Euphoria video. This season, I'm like, this woman is brilliant. The other look that I wanna talk about is her wearing Hermes. Now, again, listen, I don't normally talk about two looks on the non-channel member videos, but this is from the spring 2022 Hermes collection by Nadezhda Van Hesai-Bolsky. And I just was like, you don't see a lot of good Hermes placement. Well, you don't see like any Hermes placement. So the fact that when it comes out, you're like, ooh, and then on top of it, it's like hot. It's lovely. Again, it has like a very 1970s feeling to it. This orange, this like burnt orangey brown silk is lovely. It Really, it's gorgeous. And then the fact that it's trimmed in this really dark brown leather with the studs, almost like how you would hammer studs into leather trunks, leather pieces. It's beautiful. The fact that it has all the sort of hermes belts and there's like a collar of leather at the top. Like it is a really good look. The little heels in the leather too are just stun. And on top of that, this is only a top. I believe, and maybe it has a little short underneath, but the look on the runway actually had pants, as you can see. So the fact that she's sort of taken it and turned it into almost like a dress is even better. It's so much more fun. It's so much more exciting in that way. So I'm a big fan. Love this. Sydney Sweeney, she's a fashion girl. Very much so here for it. So we have one more Sydney Sweeney look to look at. Now this is a Fendi look from spring 2022. And... Honestly, I'm, I'm kind of obsessed. Like the Madeline Petch Fendi look, it is a sort of turtleneck cocktail dress. It's very clingy and fitted, but the pop art sort of element is very light. It's almost like, I don't know, anime-esque in my opinion. It's just, I don't know, like Sailor Moon transformation montage. I think it's really cool in that way. I think it looks good. I think it looks solid. And then on top of that, you have the shoes here, which 
with the Madeline Petch look, you're kind of like, oh, Christian Girl Autumn. Here you're like, oh my God, the shoes, they look so good. Like, I think they're really sweet. I like the fact that you can see these beautiful sort of like pop art, Art Nouveau-y kind of women illustrations on here. And like they make up the pink and the blue and all that from their hair. It's very good. And so appreciated. Sydney Sweeney doing the Lord's work. And then finally we have Zendaya. Now she is wearing, I believe, vintage Valentino. If it's not actually a vintage garment, it was recreated from a vintage piece. So this is a reference to the spring 1992 Valentino collection. The great thing about Laura Roach and Zendaya is you're always kind of saying, what does this mean? Because it means something. It always means something. There's always like a meaning behind a look. I think the great part about this is, does this reference sort of, you know, the plot of Euphoria, what is coming on the second season, the black and white stripes, jail, um, behind bars. It's exciting, it's fun, it's cool, it's kooky. Is it my favorite Zendaya look ever? No, but like, again, when the looks have a meaning to them that are like far more subtle than just saying something, something, something embroidered on them, it's fun to try and deduce even if the look isn't like amazing. So I'm excited. But with that, let's get into our best and worst looks of the month. Best? Oh, Rihanna, 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 Rihanna. Like the pink puffer, the baby bump, like good, solid. Worst look, Kim Kardashian in that Blanzago moment, just cause like, Kim, you let her get in your head. Please let me know what you guys thought in the comments down below. I'd love to hear all your thoughts, your comments, concerns, opinions, critiques. Can't wait for what's coming out soon. I'll see you on the next video in TTYL.